Okay, but let me go back to the Walmart issue. Then. Yeah. Is it, what was it that made you uh, able to sustain a challenge from a, the world's greatest retailer? Obsessive customer focus on... Well, 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 how do you focus on the customer better I'll than they you. focus on the customer? Uh, well, we've, I mean, they're pretty all, good at focusing on the customer, too. But we're very differentiated in how we do it. And so our approach, when you, if, you, if you think about our retail business, which I think is what you're asking about here, there are really three things that we know are well, critical. Well, that's the heart and soul of your business, isn't Well, it? and especially relative to the Walmart question, yeah. I think that's the key. It's selection, low prices, and fast, convenient, reliable delivery, so that the shipment side. And so we okay, have... Okay, wait, wait. So Walmart doesn't have low prices, fast, and convenient delivery? I would claim that Amazon has much broader selection in many cases if I, I, I don't want to be overly bold in my claim but the online model gives us significant cost structure advantages that lets us have even lower prices than physical stores selling online e well sometimes they have um, they do have a umbrella problems sometimes where they they, they don't want to compete against themselves online versus offline. But a Walmart, with all of the volume that it buys, its purchasing power, therefore gives it the ability to offer lower prices. Well, Doesn't that I, give them an advantage they ought to be able to translate? Because their purchasing power is bigger than your purchasing power, is it not? I wouldn't. I, I think in a lot of the product categories, uh, that ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? Meaning that we have... The purchasing uh, we, power we, to we, compete with anybody. We have the volume... Better relationships right. with suppliers, that playing field has been leveled. Okay. If you'd asked me that question, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, right. I'd have agreed with you that... And that there was a challenge you had overcome. But even then, we don't... Our profitability is not our customer's problem. We don't take the point of view that we're going to price products, you know, at a particular margin for ourselves. We say we're going to price products competitively. And if that means on that product that we lose money, that's okay because we need to take care of the customer and earn trust and we'll figure out over time and if we can if we find we can't ever make money with that product we'll stop selling it but we don't want to we're not going to make customers pay for any of our inefficiencies if you see what Did I'm you saying. you lose money on the Kindle? Every new business that we have ever invested in we have it's, it has taken years. Most businesses have either no impact on our financials for the first five to seven years, or a negative impact on our financials for the first five to seven years. And we do a lot of new things. The company is is very healthy financially. Um, we're, we're 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 doing very well, and it's it's an outcome of customer obsession. So, you know, when when we were Amazon Toast, that was because Barnes and Noble had you know this is, we only had a hundred and. When we were declared Amazon.toast, I think we had 150 employees. Barnes & Noble had 30,000 employees. And somebody wrote an article that said, you know, Amazon has had a great two-year run, but now the big boys have shown up, and they're going to steamroll them. And, you know, we had an all-hands meeting. I called all 150 employees together. I said, look, because everybody's aware of it. Every employee has read the Amazon.toast article. Every mother of every employee has read the Amazon.toast article and has father, called and said, Your father and mother who live here in New York. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. And so we had an all hands meeting and I said, Look, um, you should wake up worried, terrified every morning, but don't be worried about our competitors because they're never going to send us any money anyway. Let's be worried about our customers and stay heads down focused. And so I, you know, there, these are big, most of these are big markets. Another way to answer your your question about com competitors and Walmart is to say, look, they can succeed fabulously and it won't stop us from succeeding. These retail markets are huge. So we can, we, it, it often doesn't make sense for us to think of it as a pitched mm -hmm. battle. You know, sometimes um, people think about business as a, it's kind of like a, a, a sporting event. There's a winner and a loser. It's not a zero sum game. It usually isn't. Uh, I, I'm sure there are cases where, but most often, industries succeed. So I can tell you, I think e-commerce is succeeding. And the way we think about it, nobody else has to fail for us to do well. I think e-books is like that. I think there are going to be many winners. I think e-books is going to be a huge industry. Well, there are many competitors now. I mean, you've got Barnes and & Noble is one of them, Sony is another be, now, and Apple be more, is another. But I have a list of 50 competitors that we could walk through, I mean, you know, all yeah. over the world doing different things. And our focus is going to be, you know what, we'll try to pay attention to those competitors, but we're not going to obsess over them. We're going to obsess over readers, because those are the people who are buying that device. And we're going to make them, and it's not just a business for us, 
It's a mission for us, and missionaries build better products. What is Jeff Bezos thinking about today in 2010 that we might not know anything about that he thinks may be a reality in 2013 or 2015? Well, where is the one of the things is our the Amazon Web Services business. Now there is a business that probably this is, is not. not this is the Amazon Cloud stuff. Yes, and there there's a business that's growing. You know, it's in a hyper growth phase. It's already a significant business. That's a business that probably is not getting as much attention is there a dominant player in the cloud business now well Amazon, in the infrastructure part of it which is the part that we play in amazon is by far the leader right um and uh you know it started mostly with startup companies but now it's big enterprises adopting the best analogy i can give you for this is it's like the electric grid so instead of you know right now big companies build their own data centers and they buy their own servers and they put it in it's a lot of capex there's a lot of price of admission you have to if you're going to operate a data center you have to do it well um, but it doesn't differentiate you from your competitors. It doesn't, it, it's just a price of admission. And so what we do at Amazon Web Services is we sell compute by the hour. We sell compute by the drink. Right. And it's just like buying electricity off the grid instead of having your own power manufacturing, your own power generating plant.